This morning we heard a lot about uh, a lot of things, a lot of important information, but uh, the overarching point that keeps coming up in many of these events I go to is the regulatory pressures, uh, the challenges that we're facing, I think, at the top at the governmental level around policy, um, the pain that we feel sometimes when the press focuses on one announcement and uh, makes it very difficult to uh, for a government to deliver what they need in terms of integrated patient records across the healthcare system. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we saw some fantastic results from the study uh, that Duane just presented, um, really just focusing in on one part of uh, the overall uh, drug life cycle, um, but just how connecting the data, having access to good quality data, really can reduce costs significantly uh, within the clinical trial process, benefiting both patients uh, society and the, and the pharma companies. So um, we contributed some of that data uh, through the Oracle Health Sciences Network. And so what I want to do is explain a little bit about the Health Sciences Network and, and how it works, what its key tenants are, how we're able uh, to do this, um, and how I think it fits within the regulatory challenges that we uh, all face in terms of uh, delivering better value uh, to patients. So. First and foremost, um, thank you to Penn Medicine, who was willing to contribute their data to the study, and the protocols were run through the Health Sciences Network um, by my colleague uh, Vijay, who's uh, sitting in the audience. Vijay, raise your hand. Um, so Vijay is responsible for the Oracle Health Sciences Network globally, so if you've got any more detailed questions, he's the man to, uh, to ask. Um, at the bottom of this chart, you'll see uh, other um, hospital networks. Um, not all from the U.S., but mostly from the U.S. Aurora Healthcare uh, is in the uh, Health Sciences Network. Um, UPMC is the second largest healthcare network. I think we heard Kaiser Permanente mentioned uh, in the study UPMC, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Um, they're in the process of uh, integrating their data with plans to join uh, the Health Sciences Network. Uh, the WIN Consortium are about 20, 22 leading cancer centers from around the world and we're working with them so those cancer centers can join. So we've really got a global uh, approach. So what are the, some, some of the key tenets of the Health Sciences Network? Um, first and foremost, you may not be aware, but um, Oracle's probably the lead, leading provider of clinical trial software to pharma. Uh, we've got over 6,000 clinical trials running in a regulatory compliant cloud at any one time. So we really understand the requirements uh, both in Europe and in the US and in Asia for that matter, and Japan, uh, which is sometimes separate from Asia, in terms of what it takes to manage uh, data in a regulatory environment. But we're also very strong within healthcare, uh, delivering health analytics. Um, UPMC is, uh, I think, about 20 hospitals, 4,000 GPs, um, you know, and they're working with Oracle to integrate this data across all these different systems. Um, something we've helped them do very rapidly, value in under a year. So we've got the skills both on the trial side and within healthcare providers in terms of integrating primary, secondary, multiple EMR data, standardizing and normalizing that data. And so the Oracle Health Sciences Network is a regulatory compliant cloud environment where the providers, whether they're primary or secondary, whether they're an individual hospital or a network of hospitals like UPMC or Penn Medicine, where they can put their de-identified patient data. Now, Oracle's not in the data business. We just provide the platform. Uh, much like patients know best, we have no access to see the data unless we're granted rights. Uh, and then all we can really see are summary counts the same way as uh, the pharmaceutical companies or the medical device companies uh, can see. So the complete control lies within the organizations, the providers that manage and deliver care to their patients. They have a variety of consent models which they implement locally. Those consent models and which patients have consented and not consented is managed and controlled within the network. It's also a near real-time network. So um, CPRD is doing a fantastic job. They've got some limitations in terms of when they can get uh, the data as controlled by the government. Um, if we run the same protocol today and then we run it tomorrow, it's going to change based on the patients who came into the network, visited the hospital uh, the day before. We also know when their upcoming next visit's going to be. So we can take as much data and inter information uh, as the providers want to share 
And then we manage that in a federated environment. So we don't co-mingle uh, Penn's data with Aurora's data. They each have their own federated control of their de-identified data, and they remotely administrate that data and determine who can access that data and when. And when everything's going well, as it often does, uh, given all the hard work VJ's put in, uh, a pharma organization will come and they'll say, we want to run protocol feasibility. And they will be able to go in and choose all the attributes that they want, assuming they've been granted access by the various members of the network. And they'll be able to then fine tune that protocol in order to determine how many patients are available to the study and where they are. And really one of our only criteria to become a member for a provider of the network is that you've got well-trained PIs, that you do a lot of clinical trials, that you're going to be able to deliver a high quality trial service and collaborate with pharma. So it's not that anyone can join the network. And we really charge a nominal fee for providers to join the network. And we spend a lot of our time and money helping them integrate and normalize that data so that it's of high value to life sciences companies when it comes to clinical trials. So Oracle's really putting a lot of effort to make this possible, and then you see the results that you get from Duane's study in terms of the benefits and the savings. So those are some of the key tenets of, of the network. We're not the only ones out there doing it, but I would say that we are one of the more successful in terms of the quality of data, the ability to analyze data across, run protocol feasibility across multiple providers in order to get a really good uh, outcome. And where are we moving forward with this is once you get through identifying the uh, patients for the trial, you now have to move into recruitment. And so we're working on the workflow really uh, between the principal investigators today um, and the uh, pharma who are running the study so that they can collaborate in a bit of a workflow to refer the patients uh, validate that the patients want to go into the trial. Once a patient's in a trial, they're not going to come up when the next protocol is run by another pharma. There's a race in certain drugs, especially in cancer. We find, uh, you know, in lung, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of drugs uh, going through the trials process, so they're fighting for the same patients. Um, so you want to make sure you're not trying to recruit the same patient. And we're working to, in the future, make those, uh, the investigating teams directly collaborate and contact the candidates, obviously with the consent and knowledge with the various providers and uh, the treating physicians or uh, consultants. So we're getting better at this. We're building out the workflow based on our real world experience, based on feedback from the providers, from the patients, from uh, the principal investigators in order to further this uh, along. And this is really where we've started from, but as the quality of this data set goes, and I think I heard Jessamy ask some of these questions a bit earlier, but you know, getting into uh, collaborative effective research against these data sets, having a pharma go and say, wow, Oracle, you're at 10, you're at 15 million patients. We've run a protocol feasibility. We see that there's a lot of patients that meet these criteria. We want to get into some real world evidence, some uh, collaborative effective research. We can get into safety and pharmacovigilance. So as this data set grows and as providers become more comfortable collaborating with pharma and we come, become better or continue to be good at managing the security, tracing the control of who has access, making sure that the patient's rights are protected as we've done with uh, protocol validation and patient recruitment, we see a lot of opportunities to really further drive the benefits uh, into the pharmaceutical across the whole uh, drug development life cycle. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Okay, well